hidden jewel in Cambodia, the Bantej Mar Temple. For hundreds of years, the temple was overgrown by jungle and forgotten by the world. For nearby villagers, it's a sacred place. 900 years of monsoon rains, looters, and wars have been hard on the temple. Yet its magic remains. So they mom and her husband So Peng regularly pray inside the old temple. Their daughters should learn to respect Buddha early on. Both So Peng and Sre Mom work with the village committee on restoring the temple and preserving the ancient Khmer traditions. Sre Mom was born here. The people of Bantej Mar are proud of their enchanting and legendary temple. Before sunrise, the monks of the Buddhist monastery gather for the first prayer. The monk's mantra, a meditative repetition of sacred syllables from ancient Indian Theravada scriptures, is supposed to protect the mind from disturbances. The monk's sing song serves as an alarm clock for the inhabitants of Bantej Mar. At 4.30 a.m., loudspeakers broadcast the morning prayer into every nook and cranny of the village. Several thousand people live in the commune of Bantej Mar, located in northern Cambodia near the Thai border. It's a remote region. Until a few years ago, it had no paved connection to the outside world. So Peng and Sre Mom have lovingly arranged their traditional wooden house. Now the village has electricity. But it still doesn't have running water. Each house has its own well. In their garden, So Peng and Sre Mom grow coconuts, winter melons, and kitchen herbs with the help of their in-laws, who live with them most of the time. (laughs) 
Sere Mom grew up poor. As a child, she sold sweets to help her mother, who had a small food stall. When she was a teenager, Sere Mom desperately wanted to leave the village. Then she met So Peng. For their wedding, their parents gave the couple a rice field and land for a house. And so they remained in the village. ກໍມາດີຫນຸ່ຍເອີຈັບຖະນັດຊີດັບປີນັ້ນຈອງເອີຮຽນໃນສະກອບຊິລາຍຄືຈອງບ້ານກາງຫຍີ່ຖືໃ
The entire village is being spruced up for the big festival in three weeks' time. Its one asphalt road is repaired, and the moat is cleared to serve as the race course. During the rainy season, water lilies and lotus grew exuberantly. Now, however, they must be removed before the team's first training session. The temple complex is a huge geometric construction bordered by four moats. In the 12th century, Bantej Mar was one of the five great temples of the mighty Khmer Empire. Hundreds of Buddhist monks lived in the temple complex. It had a library, meditation halls, and a healing center. The flame of eternal light a fire that was never supposed to go out, burned in one room. Discover the past with exclusive ancient history documentaries and ad-free podcasts presented by world-renowned historians from History Hit. Watch them on your smart TV or on the go with your mobile device. Download the app now to explore everything from the wonders of Pompeii to the rebellion of Boudicca and the mysteries of prehistoric Scotland. Immerse yourself in the captivating stories of this remarkable era by signing up via the link in the description. An enigmatic face tower looms over the complex. Faces on each side gaze in the four cardinal directions. Each smile represents a different mood. On this special day, a ceremony is being held to rouse the longboats. During the rainy season, the boats were safely stored in the monastery, where they were said to sleep. Now they have to be awakened for the race. A string ritual requests the spirits to agree to the boats being roused. Villagers' prayers are carried along the string to the prow of the boat. A burning candle symbolizes the boat's awakening. The boat race is not just a competition, it's a way to honor history. The slim racing boats are still built as they were 800 years ago when the Khmer army fought its legendary sea battles. Okay. 
Younger men are permitted to carry the boat to the moat, where in the next few days, the village elders will renovate it. As usual, women have to watch. Sreimon takes comfort knowing that at least in the neighboring village there's a women's team. For the villagers, preparing together for Bonom Tuk is one of the happiest weeks of the year. In the evening, after a busy day, the gods and demons on the temple bridge guarantee the villagers' emotional equilibrium, just as they have for 800 years in Bantajmar. Villagers without wells at home fetch water from the temple reservoir. And from time to time, a truck delivers them drinking water. Although the village banks on tradition, Sreimom has nothing against technical innovation, her Japanese moped makes life much easier. Especially for going to the little market, where with Thai currency, she can purchase everything the family doesn't grow itself. <laughs> ตัวเตะครามเนี่ยเนี่ยละโมปลาเอาซีตัวนั้นโอนเออจังเคยจับจังเตะ <laughs> <laughs> จะอัชราร์มายิมคายอายตวงเอ่อปีโรยนะบ่เอ่อสําหรับญ้อมเอ่อเจียงเอ่อเจียงประจําไงญ้อมติดนี่ had almost given up hope of ever getting a job but a teaching position at the village school was just posted and she's applied. Getting that would fulfill her fervent wish. So Peng is responsible for the garden and the field. He's always supported his wife's wish to work in her profession. In Cambodia, that's not so usual.
Suleiman's mother grew up during the Khmer Rouge reign of terror and never learned to read or write. The communist regime considered education useless. Fortunately, the younger generation only knows about this period from history books. Grandchildren should grow up happy and healthy and live well. So Peng is with his friend Mao Si, the committee's president. They want to see how the temple restoration is coming along. During the turmoil of the Cambodian civil war in the 1970s, many temple treasures and statues were looted. The losses were huge, but restoration has begun. Recently, the villagers pulled this sandstone temple guard out of the moat, cleaned, and put him back where he belongs. A temple guard returns to his post. The villagers are especially proud of reconstructing the temple's front enclosure wall. A nearly 200-meter-long sandstone relief tells the story of King Jayavarman VII. The temple is dedicated to his son, who was killed in battle here. Sandstone bas-reliefs immortalize the wars between the Khmer and the Cham, two great historical powers locked in a long-running dispute. The bas-reliefs show the origin of today's boat races. ហើយដូច្នេះហើយបងប្អូនបានធ្វើបិទីអំទុកបាទបិទីបនអំទុកដើម្បីរំលឹកចេញចំនេះគឺជាមតនៈភាពមួយតែតែបរបិទីបនអ
Originally, the temple of Bantej Mar was a religious center for both Buddhists and Hindus, a type of multi-religion temple. Conservators are working on the back of the temple. Thousands of widely scattered bits must be pieced together to rebuild the enclosure walls, a huge puzzle that will take decades to complete. Archaeologists and Khmer experts have developed computer models for this purpose and retrained village rice farmers to be stonemasons. Great precision is needed to perfectly fit the sandstone blocks together. It will not be possible to completely rebuild the huge temple, and that's not the plan. Conservators seek to make the temple and its art historically valuable bas-reliefs structurally secure and to prevent further decay. Next to the rear exit sits the 32-armed Bodhisattva, the Buddha of eternal compassion. The wedding season begins just before the water festival. The temple from the glorious Khmer era is a favorite backdrop for photographers and newlyweds. Once again, the temple of Bantej Mar is the region's spiritual center and also the center of social life. Just two weeks till Bonhomme took. Two long boats are being readied for the traditional race. This boat gets a fresh coat of paint from the oldest person in the village. ຕາກົງຄືເກສະບາຍຕັ້ງປີກາດຕັ້ງປີຊ្នាំປະມານດ້ວຍອົມຕາແລ້ວຕຸກນີ້ແມ່ນຂ້ອຍມານຕາແນ
There are still a few days left before the big water festival, but there are already signs of it. The traveling carnival is in full swing. This makes a nice change for the whole family. And for a village that only got electricity a few years ago, rides and neon lighting show that it is now connected to the modern world. Sremom and So Peng know it will be hard to keep their daughters in the village when they get older. Many young Cambodians are attracted by the supposedly easy life in the city. That's why it's so important to make village life more attractive. Ensuring that children don't grow up poor, that they get good educations and job training, so they might choose to settle down in the country. Raymond's very special dream has come true. She got the job. Although it's only half days as a preschool teacher, that's okay. Finally, she's working in a school. It's Raymond's second day on the job. Everything is still quite new, both for the teacher and for the little ones, some of whom are accompanied by their grandmothers. In preschool, the children are supposed to get used to a normal school day. The following year, they begin first grade. In Cambodia, school attendance is compulsory, but some poor parents can't afford to buy the school uniform, and others need their children to help in the rice paddies. The community of Bantej Mar tries to make sure that everyone at least makes it through primary school. This month's lesson plan includes the Khmer script, counting from 1 to 10, and some basic social skills. ກະຫຼາຍບານນະກໍອ່າຕໍາເພດການ <laughs> Eating together is a daily ritual for the family. Today they're having fish amok, the Cambodian national dish. Fresh water fish from the village pond, boiled with coconut milk, palm sugar, ginger and limes. Every warm dish is accompanied by rice. Children adore the slightly sweet winter melon soup. Most of the ingredients come from the family garden. So Peng is proud he can provide fresh fruits and vegetables for his wife, children and in-laws.
So Peng is working in his field today. A sack of fertilizer just fits on the back of the moped. Cambodia has a tradition of growing rice, which is harvested twice a year in most of the country. But in Bantech Mar, the ground is too dry for that. That's why Sopeng has switched to cultivating cassava. With a little fertilizer, the nutritious tuber grows quickly. Much of the cassava harvest is exported to Thailand, where it's made into flour. ນາມຫນຶ່ງຕະລົງ <laughs> So Peng spreads the fertilizer alone. In three months' time, however, his neighbors will help with the harvest. It goes without saying that villagers give each other a hand. Today, So Peng is helping one of his older neighbors, Mr. Mayang. ໂດຍຫມໍມຸກບົກບານຢູ່ມາບົກບົກດັນບົກແຄ່ກະເດນີ້ຈຸດບານ <laughs> 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 Mr. Mayang is one of the last farmers who still uses an ox cart. He allows his grandchildren to ride on it for a short distance. <laughs> Mr. Mayang is on his way to the rice mill. The middleman pays him the equivalent of 30 euros for a 100 kilo sack. That's not much, but at least, says Mr. Mayang, my oxen don't need gasoline and they eat the hay left after the rice has been harvested. <laughs> ເບີ້ខ្ញុំ <laughs>
The rice is cleaned of stones, pulp, and milled. Monks use the year's first rice for sacrifices in the water festival. <laughs> Just three days till the big festival. Scouts form a guard of honor. This is because the racing boats are about to be launched. Another duly celebrated ritual. <laughs> we'll soon see if the repair work was successful or if the old planks still leak. The boat floats. But there's no training today. Thirteen rowers from the committee team are absent. Most of them are working in the fields. As for So Peng, he has an appointment. Shortly before Bonhomme took, a few foreigners have come to Bantage Mar. So Peng is guiding a married couple from England through the temple. He explains the bas relief that depicts everyday life in the Khmer Empire. And uh, this is the activity in the palace. You could see like that represented at the king and the queens, the concubines, yes. Yeah. And Chejavaraman the seven, he got two queens. Only two. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you two. <laughs> Only two. Only two. Yeah. Both of the queens, very strong women. Yeah. But I don't think it very much. Just a little. Yeah, it's quite refreshing. Yeah. It's like the God blessing you. Yeah. <laughs> the God blessing yeah, you. Not too cold. Yeah. And this is the story of Buddha in this in this world, this place. This place. Yeah. The history of the Buddha. He want to uh, escape from like born and reborn, like the, the reconnection. He want to stop the reconnection. So he like. He tried to find out the enlightenment. He spent six years in the forest. Then he got enlightenment. After he got enlightenment, he just first took five men, these five men, to become the monks. You know, when these five men learned very well from the Buddha, they go to teach more and more monks. Go to teach more and more monks. So now you could see a lot of monks. Yeah. How many monks? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you can find the way out. Yeah. <laughs> a little rain can't dampen Sopeng's enthusiasm. He loves sharing the temple's secrets with foreigners. Each year, only 2,000 travelers find their way to Bantej Mar, Cambodia's forgotten temple. All the visitors succumb to the temple's enchantment in all kinds of weather. It's wet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's very peaceful, and uh, you feel as if you're getting away from all this yeah. mass tourism. Because sometimes in some of the temples, like Angkor Wat, is crazy. So many people there. Don't you feel this is your private temple? Uh, at the moment, <laughs> it probably is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's your private temple. It's your private temple. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a bit like Indiana Jones at the moment. <laughs> Thank you.
ta ta mới đứng lại At last, it's Bonhomme Tuk, the big water festival. There's great excitement in Bandage Mar. Word has gotten around that a very special boat race is being held here. The only one in Cambodia in a temple moat. Everyone from the committee team is here. Unfortunately, they didn't find the time to train properly. But they really want to win. Okay, I like, I like that man in there. Okay, 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 I like that man in there. Đây xa ta tu ní tầm khán nẹ múc hay nâng nẹ cật sai cào chẳng bê là nẹ múc lên chùm vã lên chùm vã chẳng nẹ cõi cứ tơ tàm nẹ cõi cứ tơ tàm hột chẳng cái này ta bà sơ nẹ múc chốc nẹ cõi cứ ơ ơ chùm vã cứ ơ chùm vã cứ ơ chùm vã cứ ơ chùm vã cứ ơ chùm vã that said, they face stiff competition, school and student teams, and even a rowing team from the Cambodian army. The chief of police escorts local political celebrities to the finish line. One last time, a monk prays to Buddha for a lucky race. Sponsors hand out money. After the race, the boats will be brought back to the monastery to sleep for another year. All the teams use the same two boats. Whoever loses a preliminary round is eliminated. Now it's the committee's turn. They go to the starting line in front of the temple bridge. They'll be off very soon. Of course, Re Mom has come to cheer on her husband. In the other boat are the students. They get off to a much better start. 
The committee team is still trying to find its rhythm. The students are nearly two boat lengths ahead. It's a pretty clear defeat. ចាញ់ក៏ពុយយើងទៅតែសប្បាយទីព្រោះយើងបានចូលរួមការងារសង្គមបាទចូលរួមអបអបវិធីបន្ទាន់ <laughs> The village committee team does the traditional loser's dance, a lovely custom guaranteeing that everyone will leave the water festival feeling good. Who knows? Maybe they'll win next year. Racing boats in the Bonhomme Tuk water festival in Bantage Mar.